I'm Heidi, Heidi Hurley, how are you? I'm here today to go through another whole fun series. We're going to be talking about pastels today. This is creating and exploring. So the idea of this session is to share with you things that you can do with some cool materials and what you can create. It's not really about the finished product, it's about the ways that you can explore these materials. We will end up with a finished product at the end. Um, my name's Heidi, Heidi Hurley. I'm a retired director of art and design for Brain 2 Public Schools and an art educator for 32 years. I'm a graphic designer and a, right now I'm a freelance illustrator and I'm just having the time of my life. And this is, I'm doing what I love to do is share this with you. Okay, so one of the first things I like to say is there are no mistakes. You know, this is for you to explore. So maybe you've gone into Michael's or you've even gone into another store and you see some materials and you say, I don't want to buy that, I don't want to try it, it's too hard, too difficult. You know what, how do you know, right? So you have to try these things out. And I'm not an expert by any means in any of these. Um, there are some beautiful artists out there. And today's session is about pastels. There's so many types of pastels and so many different ways to work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just show you what I have, what I've done, and then hopefully you'll try some of these things out, okay? So the idea is to explore. That's the first thing. If you explore, one of the things that you do is you find things that work or don't work for you. Sometimes they're called, oops, oh, or I didn't mean to do that, and then people get all upset. You don't have to show anyone. You can just do this from your own home. You can just try it out. And what I teach you might not work for you, or what I'm going to show you might not work for you. You might not like the way that I blend colors. You might not the way that I use the materials. You might find out what works best for you. So that's really the goal of this session, is for you to explore and find out what works for you. Have fun. That's the big goal that's here. You also might come up with an aha. Like, I never knew you could do that. Or, um, aha. Uh, oh, if I mix these two things together, this is what I'm going to end up with. So I want you to try things, have some fun, share your ideas with me if you want to. That'd be awesome. So today we're going to talk about the artist Degas. The reason why I picked Degas, um, and because he worked with pastels. And so the artist Degas, you might recognize his work and I'm holding up one called The Singer in Green. Degas is an artist who is known for its, his oils and for um, also using pastels. And that's why I chose Degas. And if you take a really close look at the beautiful dress that the singer in green is wearing, it's made with real quick, almost like pencil strokes. There is no, it's, he's an impressionist, so it's very loose and it's made up really closely of taking complementary colors, which are opposite colors in the color wheel, and putting those colors right on top of each other on top of this. So pastels aren't just one color, or I shouldn't say pastels, but when you use pastels, if you mix your colors or you layer your colors, you're going to get some really beautiful, beautiful effects with this. And I believe, I don't know, when you zoom in closely, you'll see the beautiful effects of the singer's dress. Notice the green and the red-orange on top of each other that makes it vibrant. It's absolutely beautiful. So Degas is known for a few things, but one of the things that I like to share with people, and I always, this is, when I was a kid, this is all I remember, were the ballet dancers. So again, these are pastels, and I believe, I don't know this because I never talked to them, but these are very soft pastels. And what that means is, is that some pastels are called hard pastels because it's almost like a pencil. It's very, very hard to use. And soft pastels flow right off of the stick. And what they do, it's almost like painting. And um, my experience with pastels is that I started really using them 
when I took a portrait drawing class and I would use the pastels with um, a different palette. I don't know if that makes much sense to everybody, but the colors of the skin tone, I would use a particular palette. It was like painting to me. I could just layer the colors on top and just really move, but I would use what are known as smooth pastels or soft pastels, and they're very, very delicate. They, they crumble, they, um, you just have to take care of them. But there's also hard pastels. Um, they could call them pastellos or conte crayons or different types of sticks that are very, very stiff so that there are different types that you can use. So one of the things that I've done is I brought with me an array of pastels that I own that I've acquired in lots of different ways. And one of my favorite things is this box. It's an old canasta box. I don't know if anybody knows what canasta is, but a dex of cards used to be in here. And this was my traveling box. It's a hard covered box, and I would put paper towels in there so they wouldn't crumble along. But in here are soft pastels. And I think if I just take a stroke on here, you can see very, very smoothly how quickly they go on here. And then there's the hard pastels. These are pressed, they're in a, they're in a square. And these are a little bit, you can actually hear the difference. All right, so smooth is really soft and it flows on the page and um, the hard pastels are the ones that are a little bit harder. They also sell, and I don't have them because I don't use them very often, but um, pencils that are like pastels. So you can get a real fine point um, that you can work with. The other type of pastel that I really, really enjoy that I just found out about maybe two years ago, they're called cake pastels. And cake pastels look like makeup. <laughs> it's so funny. But they come in little plastic things like this and you apply it with um, like a makeup stick or a makeup brush and they have little sponges you can use your fingers I've used my fingers quite a bit and they have these sticks that you can rub and press you're painting like you're doing using a palette knife with oil paints it's so much fun I, I just find these to be really 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 neat so if I take some of these, here's the palette that I, ha that I own, but you can buy these like separately, like say you want all different blues or grays, and you can get a really nice soft, so the difference between those, so you can work with that. So they're really fun, I just enjoy them. Um, so these are just, oh, oh I love them. Watch, watch this, look at that blue. So you can really have a great time with these um, if you like the idea of paint, painting or paint brushes or whatever. So we have the cake pastels, we have the stick pastels, we also have um, the soft pastels. So Rembrandt is a brand that's well known and there are many others that are more expensive and I have some of the sticks here that I buy them individually. So the Rembrandts will sell sets. This white gives you an example how soft and brittle they are. They just shatter. And I don't throw these pieces away because I can use them. But um, these are just, when, when we say they're, they're strong, I can layer the colors on top of each other. Um, see how beautiful they are. And they work really, really nicely. So if I have contrasting colors, and work right on top of each other, very similar to what Degas did with, with, with the um, ballerina's um, or the singer's dress, how you can just take colors and put brush strokes or strokes right on top of each other to create these beautiful effects. Um, I have a treat that I absolutely love. I don't know when I'm ever gonna use them, but these are fluorescent. <laughs> and, and what's so cool about the fluorescent colors is that they are so vibrant and so beautiful. You know, have I used them in anything? Not really. Um, why? I think I'm saving them for some, I don't know what I'm saving them for, but boy, aren't these the most awesome, 
awesome use. I just, I, don't, I have to figure out maybe in a, a painting or a, or a pastel drawing of the fall and have some highlights or glimmer in the water. Maybe if I add some to this, ooh, that would be really cool. What if I do that now? Add some fluorescent orange in that storm going, ooh, how nice is that? So if I use these different ways, I mix and I blend and I take all of them and put them together. So that's one of the things with the different types of pastels. You just have to play with them to see what type that you like. Um, what I was taught or told, I wasn't taught this, I was told this, that you don't blend or smudge pastels. A, a true pastel portrait artist once said to me, oh, we don't smudge or something. <laughs> and I went, oh, oh, sorry. And so did I know it was a rule? No, but I break that rule a lot because what I like to do is I actually use my fingers and I'll smudge a lot to get a cool effect or to soften something that I just drew or to give it that effect or look. And you notice that I'm holding on to this brown cloth. What this is, it's a chamois cloth. And people use chamois cloths to dry their cars or to do um, lots of different things. But I have owned this for almost 45 years, this one. And then I received another one from a friend who said, but when I'm using pastels, it's the best way for me to wipe my hands because it's, I don't have to wet it and the chalk comes off on my hand. So this is chamois, C-H-A-M-O-I-S, chamois cloth. It also can kind of erase away some of the sections maybe that you're working on. And then to clean this off, I just kind of rub it together, kind of like a kneaded eraser, but I use my chamois cloth. I want to go put that back on there because I really liked it. I don't know why I erased it, but I did. So there we go. We have the different pastels. Now I'm going to just talk about um, paper um, because this first thing people do, or when you were in school, one of the first things someone might have done is handed you a piece of white paper and said, here, try these pastels. Um, so I tend not to use my pastels on white. I like to have a vivid background or a different colored background. And um, they sell multiple types of pastel palettes and little, little like beautiful blues and browns and different colors. And Canson is my favorite that I happen to really love because I buy large sheets of Canson. But again, these again are beautiful rich tones, beautiful colors. And um, they sell them in large, large sheets. So when I say large, <laughs> I think it's 30 by 28 by 30. And you can cut those down into smaller pieces or sizes if you want to. And I do that quite often. So this is a piece from the large size. The thing about different types of pastel paper is there's a tooth to it. There's a texture on the surface. So if you we're looking at this, you would see that they're not smooth lines. Whereas this textured paper does not have a embossed texture on it. This one here is very smooth. So sometimes paper will have two sides to it. It'll have a smooth side and a rough side. Um, and Or you can actually use um, anything that you find around. So. I know that there's some gray charcoal paper that is very similar to the one that's up here. And you can find, um, this is a wonderful texture paper to use um, for the same reason. It holds on to the pastel. If you use something that's very uh, glossy or sheen, the pastels won't work very well. Might work for you, doesn't really work great for me. Finally, there is a paper, and I'm sorry it's not in full sheets, but I can show you this. This is actually a silk screened type sandpaper. And what's so cool about this, it comes in large, I think it's 28 by 30 sheets, and I cut them down in size. I do a lot of my pastels or with this. It's very heavy, but it's the same thing 
where the texture of this is, is smooth. It doesn't have the bumps and the ridges that the Canson does, but what it has, it's almost like, um, I don't know how to explain it. So it's almost like sandpaper, but it's, it's smoother than sandpaper. So if I were to take one of my smooth pastels, here's one of my smooth pastels, and just work on top of that, it has a lovely, lovely feel. And I'm going to smudge it, even though she told me I shouldn't smudge. I'm going <laughs> to, sorry, I'm going to take this and take those. So I'm just going to kind of make like a black-eyed Susan flower that I'm just mixing these. And then I'm going to take that. And this is just experimenting. I'm not coming up with anything in particular. I'm going to take that and maybe make that big black circle that the, their black-eyed Susans are known for and go in there. Take this, maybe take another one of my pastels, hard pastels, and try to get some textures. It's, I love this because it's so much fun. And I'm going to go in here and add some more color. Look at that. How much fun is that? But it pops right off the page. And it really, really has a really nice effect. Now, one of the things that's happening that I don't know if you can see it, but the chalk is falling down off the page. Normally, I, when I work with pastels, I don't work standing up like this. Normally, when I'm working with pastels, a lot of times what I may do is I may, um, I work flat. And you don't want to blow. <laughs> If you blow, the, the chalk goes all over the place. So like, if I blow, it'll all go on my iPad over there. So again, working with the pastels, it's like painting, right? It has a beautiful feeling. If I want to go into it and work, secret, take a paintbrush, kind of pull out some of those colors. Give it a little texture. Or, if you don't have a paintbrush that you can use, you know what works really well? Eye makeup sticks, like blend those. And then finally, some of the other things that you could probably use are Q-tips. I'm just, I'm just, I can't stop. But that's, that's experimenting. That's just trying something out and working with it to, to give it that feeling. I probably should take a little white on those ends and do a few other things. But that was really fast and sweet and quick when we were working with this. Um, back to the paper, because that's why I showed you this. This would, holds the color really well. And the thing about the color is, is that if I had a white background, I would probably lose some of the fun and some of the details that I'm trying to put together with this. So again, using this, I save, I cut them down, make different sizes and save them. So again, the paper comes in pads or sheets. So the large, large sheets that we'd have in the back. All right. So this is the fun thing. Um, if you blow <laughs> and when I had a classroom of kids and we'd all be sitting around and the kids would be going and the, the chalk gets everywhere and the kids get it, you don't want to breathe it in too much. Um, I mean, that's just like another one of those things that you want to be careful of when you're working with it. You just try not to blow on it, blow on the surface. All right. So we've got pipes, we've got pads, we've got sheets, the chamois cloth different sponges. As I said, makeup sponges are absolutely gorgeous. If you get a makeup sponge, and you can get these at CVS or some other place like that, but these just fill in color in large amounts. And then I can start to blend more color into it. And you can layer. I love that term, layering. 
layering is when you put one color on top of another or you add some sort of texture on top of that. So if I start to add texture, you can't get this effect really. So it's just, I don't even know what this is. I'm just kind of playing with the colors, trying to get that to, okay? So you've got the makeup sticks, little teeny tiny makeup sticks. You've got paint brushes, you've got palette knives, you've got stuff you can scrape into it and scrape away a little bit. I didn't bring with me, but there is another um, type of pastel called oil pastel. And that's something that kids in school are using a lot. Um, Crayola makes a lovely brand. There's a bunch of them you probably remember. It smudges and smears. Um, that's also something fun to work with when you're working with in pastel. So what we're going to do is I'm going to demonstrate, come up with a product at the end. And what I'm going to do is just demonstrate some of the different techniques and everything. I don't even have anything in the middle of my head right now. I'm just going to explore and I'm going to create a picture and I'm going to discuss with you as I'm making it. So similar to what I did here, I had a, it's been stormy um, and I just, the beautiful thunder and lightning that happened and the big storm clouds that came in and the water and that was in my head and that's what I, how I created that. Um, so what I might do is just create one of my favorite things that I like to create is by going through this and using some of the papers that I have, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab a clean sheet and I like this dark green that I have and I'm going to use this as my base and close that. Now, in most cases, I don't use a, huge, a large sheet of paper. I might cut it down or cut it in half, but just for this, I may do that. Um, a secret, too, if you don't want the falling chalk to get all over your floor and you're working on an easel, if you just fold a piece of paper, it doesn't matter you know, what, what paper it is, and just put it underneath, it'll capture it all in that little funnel that I have down here. So I think what I'm going to do is go in the woods, because I like the woods, and maybe there's a pond and there's some ocean and there's a few things that are here. So I'm going to use all of my materials that I brought. And so from those materials, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how I'm doing it, why I'm doing it, and then we'll have a final product. All right, and I want you to try all these different things. If you want to stick something else in there, go right ahead. All right, so if I think about my spacing, why did I choose this dark green paper? Well, first of all, I'm using the dark green paper because my woods, normally when I look at it, it is, it's dark. Will I have sky and everything else? Absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to add a white and blue in the background back here. I'm going to be creating sky. So I'm eliminating, and I work fast, I'm eliminating my background. I mean, not background, my paper. All right, so I'm mixing light blue, dark blue. So I have this. All right, so here's my sky. I'm going to come over here, a little bit over here. And notice it's irregular. I'm going to add a little blue and white. And I'm leaving some of that green in there purposely. I might even add some extra green because I'm going to make some lily pads. And a brown. So I hope you can start to see a little bit what I've got growing here. I've got ground, lily pads, water, and sky. So I'm going to focus on my sky a little bit more because I want to build some clouds. 
So what I'm doing is working in reverse. I'm, the clouds I'm going to leave in, and the blue is the sky. Now, this is just my base. I'm going to use some of this violet. I don't know why I'm using it, but I feel like using it. Stick some violet in there at the horizon line. All right, that was done with my makeup cakes, my little cakes and stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build now some trees and some branches and start to put my details in. This is where I would use my stick pastels. I'm going to use these fluorescent ones that I'm very excited over. Um, and then I'm going to start to build. Now I can use the palette knife that I had before if I want to start to, to if my hands aren't working. I've got my chamois stick in hand. So I'm going to start to build. I'm going to start by adding, and again, I'm working fast. I'm adding some leaves and I'm starting light. These are my leaves of my trees that are starting to come out with the sunlight as I walked through the woods and I saw this beautiful place. And then I'm going to grab a different green and I'm going to add some grass. And I like to save the huge details for the, for the end because I'm going to take this and I'm going to use this brush to make my lily pads a little bit stronger. Mixing my... That's not that bright, but it's okay. And I got some lily pads coming in. And I jump all over the place because that's how I work. My water is going to need a little bit of reflection. I'll use my, my white colored pencil that's here. The sky, and I'm going to kind of pull out these clouds a little bit more. And Degas, when Degas worked, Degas worked in strokes, quick strokes. I'm kind of moving in different directions here. So here comes maybe a trunk of a tree, and I might use this, but I might use other, other, like a dark gray. I love walking into the woods and looking at trunks of trees. Everybody goes for the brown. But I'm going to take this dark gray. I'm not going to do the traditional log in the, the front. <laughs> you know, they get the frog with a turtle, turtle on there. Nah, I'm not going to do that. And I, I'm working quickly, very quickly. I'm going to go back into those clouds and I'm going to make them This place is in my imagination. It could be Pond Meadow, couldn't it? You know, when you well, maybe not. So I'm going to add. So now I'm going to go crazy because I want to add those fluorescent colors, right? So I'm looking at this and stepping back, like, this is up front. Maybe I'll put, oh, cat and nine tails. What are those, what's that beautiful? Notice what's happening every time I add the details to this, it starts to pull in. So on cat and nine tails and lily pads, we usually have those flowers and the grass. 
needs a canoe. All right, so let's take some more of this green and start to blend it in. Use the bigger stick. So these are great for blending. You know, like I, I don't want soft leaves. I want to have, but I want to have the sky coming through. And I'm going to add that fluorescent green. I'm so excited about this. Birch trees. Ah, oh, we should have put stuck a birch in here. How quick is this, right? How much fun. So Heidi Hurley is going to break into this, and I'm going to put the fluorescent colors in there. Lily pads tend to be white, I guess, right? Or pink or whatever color, so I'm going to put these on here. But then I'm going to take that fluorescent green because it's a really, is this green or yellow? I'm not quite sure, but I'm going to add this for accent. Oh, <laughs> I'm loving this. Isn't that awesome? Look at that. All right, so we're going to sparkle some of those in the leaves. The sun's coming through. You're out of the woods, you're out of the dark, you're out of the night. Open. It's like, how much fun. These are just fun. These are pastels. This didn't take long. Do I dare add? All right, the complement of green would be a red orange. So maybe I want to. Do I dare do it? Yeah, why not? So I'm going to take this color somehow and find where I want to add maybe a little sparkle in the. Oh, oh this is so much fun. Maybe I'm going to put some in the clouds. Yeah. And I'm going to blend that in. Should we make it storm? So here's uh, the chamois cloth. If I take this and I clean it off with the chamois cloth, I can go in and I'll have my clean brush again. So do you remember what color the base color of this paper was? It was green, right? So I pulled the white first, pulled through, and that's showing me that I, if I want to make this cloud stronger, I can just layer on top of it or make shadows underneath it, make that horizon. I'm actually, it's like, I have, I have to step back a little bit because I want to see about depth. Oh, this is so cool. Um, take this. I'm just bummed at my white. It'd be kind of cool to have a um, canoe or kayak going on in there. So I don't, you know, I didn't have anything really in mind on this. I just kind of let it happen. Maybe there's a little bit of water that's come up like here. What's my favorite part of this? Right now it's the fluorescent green, the way that it pops right up. That's really fun. Can you take these with you on the road? I, you know, I probably wouldn't for a couple reasons because they're just, um, for me, they're a little bit messy. But you could. I'm sure there's people that have done parts, you know, gone and traveled and take their pastels with them. All right. So let's see what we can add here. I think that's pretty good. Now, 
I don't know how many minutes that was, but I might go back into this and go back in and work on this, put it aside and work on it, you know, a couple more days later. But um, my little, right now my very quick little piece is kind of fun. I've used my pastel sticks, I used the um, soft sticks, I used the hard sticks. Um, I think I use pretty much everything. What's my favorite? I love using the sponge. Um, even though there's a rule people that say you're not supposed to use them, I like to break those rules and go into it. I also like to break rules and add every color possible. So I'm starting to add a little magenta. Maybe I go into the sides, put some more in here. Bright cobalt blue. Treat whoever you're trying to, just treat them with the colors. Have some fun. I do paintings and I tend to hide things in the paintings for people to see. Like I'll put someone's name in there or something. That's also a lot of fun. Frogs, whatever. All right, so. I'm going to call this one to a close in a second, and then I'll do some little demos with some pieces that are already worked on. All right? So, what we have here, uh, again, quick, but layered the, layered the light colors first, background, and worked on top of that. All right? So, that's one treat. So, the other thing that artists would do is they would work on top of another painting. So in the last session that we had, there we did watercolors. And so I have some really cute little watercolors that I just did and experimented with. So if you take the watercolor and build on top of that, then you also have what's called mixed media that's watercolor and pastel. So here I have my clouds and everything, and these were done really quickly with watercolors. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those and I'm going to, let's put the, oh, one more thing. What do I do with it after it's done? Well, some people say spray it with a fixative. I've been taught not to spray them at all. Don't, because what happens is, is that the, the chalk that's on there um, soaks into it and you lose some of your quality and some of your vibrancy. So that's one thing. I always put a piece of paper over it, protect it, and travel with it. Uh, newsprint works really good. So I've got about five minutes. I'm just going to show you with one of my pieces what some of the cool things that you can do with your pastel. So I'm going to take this little mini me that I love. I'm going to just add this here so you can see it. And, come on, stay, okay. So, little watercolor. What can I do with this? Well, I can add texture. I can add some lines. I can add, so if you have something that you've already done, work on top of it. So again, here's my blades of grass. I'm into that. Almost like an Andrew Wyeth thing with the, with the grass and the field and the meadow. And I'm going to mix my colors. Maybe there's some. Oh, 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 I get to use my fluorescent colors. So there's a field of bright, beautiful flowers. Down the cape, we have all of those. And then if I want to soften that sky a little bit, maybe I grab my palette knife and a little blue, and then I can go in there and I can smooth up those clouds a little bit. How nice is that? Always room for more stuff. All right. Well, I'm hoping that I had the opportunity to share some fun things with you to try. What did I do? I explored, I made an oops, 
I had some fun. It's all about just trying out different materials. So today was pastels. It's fun, it's messy, and it's a blast. So until the next time, for BCAM and for Branch Community Arts Center and from me, Heidi Hurley, I want to wish you awesome creating, do art, and have fun. Take care. Mm -hmm.